In Perth in those days, the physiotherapy school was run by the registration board in Chenton Park Hospital, which was an annex of the Royal Perth Hospital. And it was the infectious, or had been the infectious diseases hospital. The school was a ramshackle collection of old buildings. The lecture room and practical room was an old army hut or air force hut or something like that that they'd brought on site and put a wall in the middle of it and the lecture theatre one side and the practical room the other. The um, president, the, the head, head, head's office was an isolation room that had been tacked on to the side. The gymnasium had brought, been brought in from the RAF base in Pierce and everything was cobbled together basically with a boardwalk and a bit of a roof over, over all the bits and pieces. And uh, they had a, a, a concrete block, um, ablution block for the boys and the girls. And in those days, they took 20, 20 students each year, and mainly girls. On a rare occasion, they'd have two boys. There always had to be multiples of two for practical purposes, of course. And uh, this particular year that I went, there were actually six boys and 14 girls, and I was the youngest, having done a year at school, uh, at university, and the others had done other things, and one was a builder and about 10 years older. So it was a diverse group that finished up in the school. Run in those days by a physiotherapist from England, Miss Francis, very English, very proper. And did we have fun with her? And uh, there are all sorts of stories that one can reminisce about, of course. The first one was that first practical class, massage, and the boys are on this side and the girls are on that side, and there this, this thin, flimsy cotton curtain was drawn between the boys and the girls. That was fine, except when the sun shone in, we could see straight through the curtain anyway. <laughs> So it really was uh, not much use, but this went on for a couple of weeks. And the entrance to the room was through the boys' side, and uh, this particular day one of the girls had to go out, go to the toilet or whatever, came back in and realised that we could see straight through the curtains, and that was the end of the curtains. From then on, they disappeared, and of course we just got on with what physiotherapists should do and treated each other or practised and so forth. And, and uh, the headmistress, Miss Frances, she was appalled at this behaviour, but anyway, she sort of had to fit in with the Australian way of doing things and uh, acceded to that. Another particular activity that we enjoyed was before a practical class in the gymnasium, particularly when it was cold in winter, we'd have a game of keepings off with a, a netball and it was always the six boys against the 14 girls. And quite often there was this ruck on the floor of hands and balls flying, and I won't mention which sorts of balls, but if they were in the road, they disappeared too. <laughs> and it was sort of, let's get at this netball at the bottom. So occasionally there was this sort of throbbing ruck of bodies in the middle of the floor. And Miss Frances came in on one of these. Well, did she hit the roof. <laughs> it, was, it was the funniest. And uh, the girls had to go into the lecture room and she gave them a real telling off and told them about the boys and the girls and the birds and the bees. And the boys had to go into her little office den and, and were severely reprimanded for all of this sort of activity. This is 1966. And uh, you look back on this now and you laugh a bit and you think, well, oh, goodness me, but that was the standard of behaviour or, or activity, sociability, whatever you call it, that, that these staid old professionals expected in those days. So it's, it's interesting looking back now to think how far physiotherapy has come and, and how it's, it's evolved into the open sort of profession that it is. But those, those days, again, we had to wear white shorts and shirts as boys and plimsolls, sand shoes and socks. Another situation, I was still doing a bit of rowing in those days for the club and uh, I'd torn open the heels of my, of my both feet 
on a long distance race from Fremantle to Perth in the middle of winter. It was as cold as heck. The boat sunk and I hadn't realised that I'd torn my heels apart. So for six weeks I walked around in bare feet, which suits me just fine. And for six weeks Miss Francis kept reprimanding me and saying, when are you going to be wearing your shoes, Mr Drock? Of course we were always Mr this or Miss the other. Never mind a proper name or anything like that. Very British, and I'd say, oh, getting there, Miss Francis, and she'd huff and walk away, and I just sort of thought rude thoughts and, uh, <laughs> and left her to it. But that was the sort of atmosphere that we trained in. We had fun. We, we made our own fun, and uh, I must admit that I think we, we were the last straw because Miss Francis resigned at the end of that year and went back to England. <laughs> So that, that was sort of the, my first year into, into physiotherapy training. Then, of course, you get into the more serious matters. You start doing practical work. You go to the hospitals. We didn't do any private practice work in those days. And uh, really, we, as I said, we were different to a university setting. We started at the end of January on our course. We finished on Christmas Eve. The last month after exams, we were um, doing hospital training, as they called it. In other words, we were used as cannon fodder in the wards to learn nursing stuff, and we did bedpans and making beds, and everybody else was on holiday at that stage. And here we were still turning up at the various hospitals being used as, as I say, cannon fodder. That annoyed the hell out of all of us, of course, that uh, you know, we weren't learning anything practical. How many beds do you have to make or patients do you have to transfer in a bed? But that was part of what it was in those days and we really had no choice. You either did it or you didn't do it. So, uh, yeah, the, the, the schooling times went on and at the end of it, of course, we graduated. There, there was one other situation that I'm reminded of. I did say that it was an infectious diseases or had been an infectious diseases hospital. So we had to have inoculations for all sorts of things as our first year in the first term. Every Friday morning we lined up at the first aid clinic. We had our polios and we had our tetanuses, of course, but we had typhoids and diphtherias and all sorts of things. And some of these injections, the sods did it, as I say, on a Friday, and your arms swole up like a football so that you had to live with this over the weekend. And um, this, is, I guess, is where Miss Frances got her own back on us because she always took us for exercise on a Friday afternoon and <laughs> made us pump these arms around that were sore and swollen and painful. And uh, she just loved it. I must say, I guess, at the end of the exercise pro period, that with the increased circulation, things had settled a bit. But at the time, we thought, oh, you miserable so-and-so. <laughs> but it was one of the things that I, I'm so full of all sorts of vaccines and, and so on that I don't think I'm ever going to be able to die. <laughs> <laughs>